last time on Mulberry Branch Farm. We introduced you to Guinevere, a brand new member to our herd of Nigerian dwarf goats all the way from Kentucky to live with us here in Indiana. Then Beth surprised me with a brand new doling that she delivered all on her own. She snuck a little bit under the radar, so we didn't get a whole lot of film of it, but that doling is so cute. Next, we had Rapunzel, who gave me one of the most scary bursts that I've ever had to assist in. And while it was a tough pull for the buckling that came out first, nothing prepared me for the double prolapse that I was about to face while she was trying to pass her second donor. Ah. No, no, don't prolapse. Ah. Don't prolapse. But with a lot of prayer and a lot of work and patience, both kids were delivered safely and mom is on the mend and is happy with her two new brand new babies. Now it's Opal's turn and it looks like this birth might need a little bit of an assistance too. They say all good things come in threes. And three good things are coming out of today. We have three does that have all decided to kid within 12 hours of one another. I feel like good thing is objective in this instance. I came out to do my evening chores and my milking and found that Opal was definitely in labor. And she was pushing hard. Her contractions were coming pretty close together and I wasn't seeing any type of progression. I usually try to give my girls half an hour to 45 minutes to progress. And once they meet that threshold, I decide to grab some gloves, go in and just check to see how the kid is positioned. And boy, am I glad I checked on this one because Miss Opal does need help. Okay, mom, you've been pushing kind of hard for a little bit. Don't get mad. Don't get mad, don't freak out. Don't you start biting me. No. No. See, look. Here, see? That's the first I've ever had one of my does try to bite me. Okay, let's see how this goes. It's been a little bit of time, Mom. It's been a little bit of time. Hey, 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 no. It's been too long, no. No. Now I know for some of you that have zero reference to what it's like or what I'm even doing trying to help this doe pass this kid safely, is that this kid is in a state of dystocia. And what dystocia means is that it's malpositioned. So usually baby goats are positioned in a diving position. Nose to toes is what we want to feel but I can't see inside the birth canal. So when does struggle like this, I have to go in manually. And then I have to try to see with my hands because I can't physically see in the birth canal. And while that also may seem like a simple task, every baby goat is encased in an amniotic sac with fluid, which kind of feels just like a little bubble. So I'm in here manipulating around this baby and the amniotic sac, trying to make sure that we position it correctly so that it can pass safely with as little damage to itself and its mother in the process. And it can be a pretty daunting job. I know, I know, now we're in complete and total shock. Now we're in complete and total shock. Now we're in total shock, it's okay. There's one, there's one little baby. And I think it's pretty easy to tell here that Opal's body language is suggesting she's in shock and she doesn't want a whole lot to do with this kid. First time fresheners sometimes are confused during labor and then you throw on stress and a painful pull and they're definitely valid in going into shock. She doesn't want a lot to do with her kids so I'm going to be taking birthing fluids from the kid and I've rubbed them on her snout so that she will start to lick her muzzle and try to clean and that will sometimes lead them back to their kid. 
so that they will also start to lick and clean their newly born kid. This is important when it comes to uh, the doe learning how the kid smells and the, the kid learning what their mother sounds like. It's a bonding experience and it's important. And if the weather is inclement, it's important to have a doe that's kind of on it that wants to clean her baby because the quicker she gets this goop off of them, the more quickly they're going to be able to start self-regulating their own body temperature. She took a little bit more coaxing than I thought she would. But once she starts to make that connection with her kid and they start the bonding process, it's important to be able to read your doe's body language. And she's much more comfortable with me backed away. So I'm going to back out, stay out of her way, and let her start bonding with this kid like she would if she'd done it all by herself. And she is certainly hearing on too. Okay, she's air dropping. Okay. Let me get in here to make sure that she's not in the sack. Hello. Hello. She just airdropped the most beautiful, who's going to be goldish red like her, blue-eyed little buck. Didn't you? Oh, mommy. How beautiful. She's still got babies in there, because I can feel them like when I touch her right here, just gently. There is a hard mess. I don't even have to hardly push up. She's already got a baby. It's probably moving into the canal. Normally, because I pulled the first one, I would just pull all of them, but because she's a first timer, she was technically in shock at the beginning. I'm not going to overwhelm her either with trying to clean like three babies. I'm gonna let her go at her own pace because she just passed that one all fine. It was all by on her own. So I'm just gonna throw some. Down. Aww, baby. Why do all the pretty ones have to be boys? I guess that's gonna help, but you know, he's a first time freshener. She's a first timer. Technically, he'd only go as unregistered because I don't know if she's good, good enough production wise or confirmation to really go and be like, have a buff that goes on to, to promote genetics for the Nigerian dwarf breed. But he certainly is cute. Oh, mommy, you did a good job. She passed him, no problem. He's twice the size of the doling. The only reason she didn't spit the doling out on her own is so that she was presenting hawk first and she was creating a roadblock. And she's already got another water bag look, that looks like it's starting. So she will be having another one here very, very shortly. I'm just keep my ears open. I'm gonna start milking. Walked away for a second and she just air dropped the third. Okay. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. <laughs> Did you give me a blue eyed doe? Oh, you gave me a gold blue eyed doe. There's number three. And this little guy just wants to be a visitor. Hello. No, 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 no. You, sir. No. Visiting hours are not open. Opal ended up giving us two dolings and one buckling. And I am so happy that this was the end of our kidding season for now. Three does within 12 hours was more than enough for me, but I'm more than happy that things turned out well and that we have three healthy little babies that are bouncing bundles of joy in our barn. And I'm really excited that you got to come along with us while we experienced Opal's first birth. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know the drill. Leave a comment, drop me a like, and subscribe. But until next time, guys, we hope that you are all staying safe out there and being kind to one another. We will catch y'all in the next one. God bless you. Bye y'all.